I was hoping you could do an inspection for me today. An inspection on this? No, no, of uh, the building I just bought. The building? Yes. I'm not the building wizard, I'm the car wizard. I mean, we're not putting it up on a lift, obviously, no. so. No, I can't um, lift this thing. Holy, whoa. What? That felt like the floor was about to give way. Oh, it's not that bad. You could actually probably drive a car on it. I don't know. I don't know if I would trust that. We might try it with a Lamborghini. <laughs> what if it falls through? Th well, then we know. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And today is going to be a very fun and interesting day inspecting my latest purchase, which is a giant 3,500 square foot building that started life as a grocery store and then was a butcher shop and then was a furniture store and then an upholstery shop. And now it's, well, mine. It's 90 years old. It's had a lot of improvements and changes over the years. And I didn't have it inspected before I purchased it because I am a complete and total moron. So instead I'm going to have the car wizard inspect it because that's the only way I know how to do things. But also Car Trek is live on Tavares' channel. We imported our favorite cars from overseas and then submitted them to a series of challenges. And well, actually, I had a completely different car in mind that I had bought for the challenge, but unfortunately it didn't arrive in time. And more on that in a little bit, but because the car wasn't showing up on time, I had to scramble to buy something else. And thankfully the perfect car was just in the United States brought in and we used that. I slotted it in to the challenge for the latest car trek and it did great, but spoiler alert, sadly, it didn't win. So I had to sell the car. We did a silent auction at the Amelia Island Concours. That's in the last episode that will come out on the same day as this. And the high bidder, well, he's a familiar face. So let's go to the past Hoovy a few months ago. Slightly less distinguished, obviously, but equally handsome, where he'll talk about the end of car trek and where the car is going. Well, thank you for that marvelous introduction, Hoovy, you handsome devil you. I'm at the end of actually Car Trek 7 right now at the Florida Georgia border, and we chose to import cars from overseas for our latest set of challenges. This is actually Ed's choice, and this car came in from Lebanon. It has something really spicy under the hood. It's really cool and way, way faster and better than what Freddie and Ed bought. But Car Trek is brought to you by Auto Tempest, the best place to search for a used car online as it combines all the major listing sites into one search. Not only that, but you can get really specific on your searches like for color or engine size, or even if you want a manual transmission, just about anything. And using Auto Tempest, something I do every day shopping for used cars, a very, very fun act makes Car Trek possible. They've been with us since the very beginning. They are a fantastic place to search for a used car and to support us in Car Trek. So today I will give you a tour of this car as it's finished in Car Trek 7 and then briefly hint at what's happened to it. And after you search for a car in Auto Tempest, you can go watch and we'll find out where this car is going. So this jewel here is a 1987 BMW 325i that came from Lebanon, hence the slim Euro bumpers. But under the hood is something really, really special. It has a V8, which these cars never got, and this is from a 1995 BMW 540i with a six-speed. Unfortunately, we've had some incidents. Uh, I kind of hit a Crown Vic, and then a few days later, I got rear-ended by another car. It should all be in the video, but a uh, very cool setup. Obviously, a really good-looking car, but uh, there's a few little sketchy things. I'll just give you one hint here in the glove box. Take a look at that. Oh, I got a leg in the way, but yeah. Yeah, that's a that's an ECU for a V8. Um, but anyway, it's not my problem anymore. Thankfully, somebody else has dove on the grenade. Uh, they gave a amazing bid of five thousand and sixty nine dollars, which is the biggest loss I've had in years on a car. And, well, it was JP the initials, but it turned out to be a man hiding behind a pillar there. There he is. So I guess Jared is going to use this thing as a drift car, which is, is excellent for that. If you check out Car Trek, I'm able to do a lot of hoonage in this car. So I'm going to have fun. It's, uh, it's put together well. Wellish, yeah. yeah. You'll have to fix a, a, a lot of things, but uh, it's all yours. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'm excited. So check out Wrench Every Day to see what happens to this. And uh, well, let's go back to the future Hoovy, who is probably aging very, very well. Oh yeah. So sadly I didn't win and that car was a massive basket case, so I didn't mind selling it, but it definitely planted a love, a new love of E30s, which is why when this one popped up with only 82,000 original miles, totally original, one owner, unmolested, I had to buy it. But this 
was the car that was supposed to be on Car Trek. It is a 1991 Renault Alpine Turbo, and I bought it at auction in Japan. Unfortunately, they had a tie up in the ports with COVID or some other excuse, so it didn't get here in time for the show, and I had to scramble to buy the BMW. But this would have been a great entry because it's something we didn't get in the United States. It is so cool looking, so quirky, but a fantastic car to drive as well. And I am okay with the way things turned out in Car Trek, but this this may have been a winner right here. Now, the Alpine brand started back way, way long ago, 100 years ago or so, as its own kind of sports car company. They built winning race cars in the 1950s that competed in the Milli Miglia, very hot in the vintage racing scene. But by the 1970s, they were a struggling company and they were bought out by Renault, another French car company. But they sort of left Alpine alone to let them do, well, mostly whatever they wanted. And this latest iteration of the Alpine, which came out in the 1980s, this one was improved kind of a nose job in the early 90s, I believe, certainly stayed true to the Alpine heritage. And well, it's very, very weird and very French. So like I said, this car didn't come from France. It came from Japan where they were sold there and it only cost well, a little over $10,000. Shipping it here cost many, many thousands more, but still a great deal on a car that's well, arguably pretty rough cosmetics wise. But underneath it is actually a really, really good car. Now these won't rust because they are a 100% composite body. This one's a flexible panel apparently, and it has been repainted well, rather badly, unfortunately. You can see it's all cracking there. I just can't get over. I'm gonna do that again. It's it's rubberized, it's, it's flexible. I had no idea. But basically the whole car on the surface is pretty rough. You see the bucket seats that are really cool. The shifter setup, which is awesome. Vintage stereo, gauge cluster, really weird and quirky, but also super functional and cool. Just unfortunately, a little rough around the edges. You see the V6 turbo under the hood is a familiar engine. If you're a DeLorean fan, it is the PRV. Peugeot, Renault and Volvo got together and sort of shared an engine. And this is probably the best of the bunch when it came to the PRV and the DeLorean is a little over hundred horsepower. It's like a dog. This thing is about twice that with the turbo and it definitely hauls. I wonder why more people haven't swapped DeLorean motors for some of these because this thing drives so, so well. We'll get to that in a little bit though. Kind of similar to the DeLorean though, where the engine is mounted in the back under the cover. And then another cover, in this case, glass instead of louvers. But you see the shape of this car, just so weird and quirky and so cool. The wheels, what a neat alloy design. These Michelin tires look absolutely ancient though, but plenty of tread. I just love the look of this thing so, so much, but Unlike a lot of 80s cars where they look really cool and weird, but they drive like absolute garbage, the Renault Alpine drives so, so nice. It really is a shame that I didn't get a hold of this thing for the trip with the car trick. But here we are, the BMW did fantastic even though it didn't win. And coincidentally, when I mentioned this car got here and mentioned that I wasn't keeping it, uh, somebody wanted it. And I'll give you one guess who it was. Yeah, that's Freddy Tavares, uh, the pooper scooper of automotive YouTube, really wants this car to restore. So I'll be sending it to him down in Florida, but not before I take it on one last drive. And be sure to check out Car Trek, the latest series if you haven't already. We put a lot of work into it. Our sponsors, Auto Tempest and Ticket Clinic, spent a lot of money so we could hire a big crew and do our own version of Top Gear. And well, I love doing it. And you all watching makes it possible to do more. So click the link below to watch it along with Auto Tempest. But now let's go on one last drive in the Alpine. Now I've driven one of these before, made a video, Urination Bobs, which was a non-turbo with only like 27,000 kilometers on it. This one has 127,000 kilometers and really it drives exactly the same. It doesn't look the same. This one's a lot rougher, but it feels the same other than the turbo and it feels fantastic. <laughs> yes, there is that stereotypical 80s turbo lag, but other than that, it feels really, really good, really modern, excellent visibility. The steering is just wonderful as well. It's unassisted, but it's not too heavy. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. It really is a shame that I didn't get this thing in time for Car Trek. I am okay with what happened, and of course the BMW did well, but didn't win. But this thing, this is much more in the spirit of the challenge. And off we go. There's that turbo. Oh, that's great, the shifting 
is wonderful as well. And this one also has air conditioning, all modern power options. So you get a very practical, livable, fun car, but it is so weird and quirky and cool. And that's what makes the Alpine such a cool car to import and buy and bring to the United States because you don't see many of these. And amazingly, even though the car looks very weathered and sort of falling apart and may have not have been taken care of that well, there's no creaks, there's no rattles, there's really nothing out of sorts, no lights on, straight tracking. So impressive. Oh, this thing drives so much better than it looks, unlike the Audi, which looks great but doesn't drive at all. So I'll Freddy enjoy this thing, sending it your way soon. But now let's head up to the Car Wizards, and I'm going to go in my Mercy Lago Roadster because it's a little bit of an anniversary. We're on two years since the Car Wizard got this thing running and sorted, and we took it on a trip to the lake where we did some yachting. It may have planted the seed for him to buy his own yacht. And well, what started as a joke became reality. So hopefully the wizard doesn't mind inspecting a building for me instead of a car, but let's hit the road. Hello, wizard. Hello. We just had a lovely meal to celebrate the two-year anniversary of you fixing this car. Yes. The Mercy Lago, and she's running great. <laughs> I was hoping you could do an inspection for me today. An inspection on this? No, no, uh, the building I just bought. A building? Yes. I'm not the building wizard, I'm the car wizard. Yeah, but you are a real estate mogul, you own multiple buildings, so you know what to look for, right? Yeah, I guess I do, I've bought a few buildings. Yeah, so let's just stop by, give it a quick looky-loo, huh? Let's do it. So Wizard, you know this place a lot better than me. It was an upholstery shop before, that's who I bought it from. He sort of retired, but he's still gonna do some work for us. So you've seen it a lot, but you haven't really looked at it with your critical eye, right? Right. So what do you think? Well, it's definitely an old building. It's been around, it's been what, several iterations of different things, like a grocery store. Yes, I heard, a butcher shop. A butcher shop. Furniture store. A lot of different things. Well, I can tell on the corner something is actually hidden at some point. Is it? Like a delivery truck or a... Well, they've repatched it. So my building's been hit. It's been in an accident. It's been in an accident. Wonderful. All right, well, should we walk around the outside first and then go in? I mean, we're not putting it up on a lift, obviously, no. so... No, we can't um, lift this thing. Yeah, we'll take a look around the outside. Yeah. But you're kind of a little bit of a real estate mogul yourself now. Two giant buildings. I hope to get two or three more. Well, I beat you to this one, so... Yeah, you did. Uh -oh. Anyway. What's that? A potential lawsuit. Is this... Oh, okay. Yeah, so just a somebody walking by happens to walk by your building and goes their ankle and then they're looking for the building owner. So what is that? Well, let's take a look. I think it used to be a drain or an access or something. Looks like they filled it in with rubble. Okay, so that people couldn't go really deep and like actually die. All right. I can reach under your building, I'm fondling it. Oh, all <laughs> right. So I need a new metal plate. Yeah, put a new plate there that can support someone's weight. And obviously I need a paint job and some stucco repair. Yeah. But it's a good looking building, isn't it? I it mean, really the detail and all cool. that. For 75 grand, I mean. You can't beat it. Yeah. Yeah, a little more damage here on this stuck on this. Mm -hmm. And this is the addition, so this is an original, obviously. So we have a concrete floor on this one. Right. But, uh, yeah. So you're positive about it so far, so huh? So far, it's looking pretty good. Okay. It def like you said, it could use a paint job. It looks like they've got vinyl siding on the back, so that's been done in the last 15 or 20 years. Nice. Yeah. This, this thing looks like it's from about 35, 40 years ago. I think it's older than you. <laughs> it may be older than me, but it still works. The air conditioning still works. Yeah, but I am probably going to be spending five grand or so on an AC unit at some point. Yeah. And one little weird thing back here, I'm not sure, uh, you know, I didn't have a survey done, but I imagine the property line, uh, the neighbors are, they're growing things back here. Not sure what they're growing, but it doesn't look like it's anything uh, medicinal. Looks like their their garden used to be their driveway. Oh, something. I see that. Like there's a foundation for a garage. There's the footings right yeah. there. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So nothing alarming outside other than the lawsuit waiting to happen. No, nothing really. I mean, there's lots of little cracks and stuff. From yeah. The, but it's an old building. It's to be expected. Right. Well, shall we? Yeah. Let's inside. Take a look inside. Here it is. Hello. Wow. That looks is, bigger, doesn't it? It does. It looks a lot bigger. About 3,500 square feet. Wow. 
Sounds hollow under here. Yeah, yeah, the floor is uh, wood. Uh, they replaced it, the new subfloor, whatever, the plywood underneath, uh, but there's some spots that are a little sketchy. This was the heavy shelf that had all the fabric on it. Okay, yeah. And it was punching a hole through the floor. Yeah, so. Well, don't push too hard. I don't want to have you hurt yourself. Right. <laughs> you can tell a lot of weight was right here because the floor is actually bowed a little bit right here. Yep, it certainly is, unfortunately. And I don't know what I could do about that. It, is there a crawl space under here? There or? is a crawl space, yeah. They could probably get under and jack it up and put some jacks. Okay. And when Brian opened the upholstery shop, he poured this slab of concrete so he could bring one car in and work on it. And you can kind of see how it uh, butts up to the wood here, the water coming over the years. Yeah. Oh, I see that, yeah. Yep, and the plywood that uh, is under there. So if I do new flooring, then I'm looking at some subfloor repairs. You definitely don't want to get your fingers in that fan. Right? Isn't that a cool vintage fan? One thing that's not cool is all that water staining. Though. Well, that's all from before the roof was fixed. Okay. So it has a new roof, like two or three years old, and it's dry. Oh, I've been in here when it's pouring rain and there's no water coming in, but before the roof was fixed, there was a lot of water coming in, unfortunately. I know from experience, anytime you mention, you call someone up for work for commercial, you mentioned that word, a commercial building, the price triples. Now the AC ducting is nice and relatively modern. Yeah. It may not be 35 years old. It may not be, but you never know. Holy, whoa! What? That felt like the floor was about to give way. Oh. It's not that bad. It's, it's definitely a little wavy and warped from, once again, water coming in. I think that's just a linoleum doing that. Not oh, okay. The There's probably an underlayment, like flat, thin board, and that's also warped. I see. Well, if you're really concerned about the floor and want to inspect it, there is this, this hatch here. You can go down there and uh, see what's going on if you'd like. Wasn't there a scary movie like The People Under the Stairs or something? No, there's, no, no, there's nobody under there. Are you sure? Nothing. Yes. There's nobody been buried down here? Or... Do Just... you know what this is? This is just access to water lines and sewer and things of that nature. Yeah. Well, why don't you go down there and look? Are you going to close the door on me and stand no, on it? No, I'm not. Are you sure? How does it look? It's like a big dirt blob. <laughs> any damage? No, I don't see any damage. If you have to get to any of these wiring or anything, it's not going to be fun. You have to cut through the floor. Straight through there, there's cinder blocks with wedges of wood on top of them. Mm -hmm. Those are supports for the floor beams. Those could be shimmed or whatever at different places to raise the floor. Okay. Well, one thought is to pull all this up and just keep pouring concrete like it would be over here, but I imagine that'd be very, very expensive, right? That, yeah, that would be very, almost as much as you paid for the building, probably. Really? <laughs> <laughs> See, I have no idea. So you got wood, underlayment, and then the, the tile. So, so from here up is wavy. Yeah. But the floor is fine. Well, that's like, we have one inch plywood, one inch plywood, your subfloor or whatever, that's probably and then the three, tile. I think that's three quarter. Okay. But it might be one inch. Whatever it is, it's very thick. Yes. I even think it's two layers, so it's really strong. So you could actually probably drive a car on it. I don't know. I don't know if I would trust that. You might try it with a Lamborghini. <laughs> What if it falls through? Well, then we know. It looks like they stopped off the water line going outside. Oh, yeah, maybe the pipe froze or something and that's how they fixed it. Either that or it was something out there that's no longer used. Interesting, okay. So here is your cable, telephone, different services coming in. Yeah, well, speaking of Mexican, you're actually close to the bathroom. Come on in. Take up one of these switches does something. Um, the electricity get turned off? I thought I'd turn the electricity on, but I guess they shut it off on me. Hmm. Interesting. So they haven't come out to turn it on yet. Yeah. See the main breakers. On. Whoa. That's the main, see? Okay. Look at those fuses. Mm -hmm. 100 amps. Wow. The 200 amp service. Holy moly. 
That's awesome. But what's not awesome is having it right next to a sink or something. Oh my goodness, yes. If you're washing your hands and splash and... You, you can just, I'll just... I said that's awesome, so you can just... You can interject. Uh, oh, mm, the meat saw. For the meat saw, for the... Uh, the walk-in oh, cooler. Wow, which is long gone in this place. Air yeah. conditioning cooling tower. That is so cool. It is. The, the vag box? <laughs> the veggie box? The veggie, oh, sorry. Oh, for the grocery oh, store. Oh, the 20-foot long meat case. So none of this stuff is, obviously, but it's a remnant of the old grocery store. That's really neat. Yeah, 20-footer. How about that? 20-foot meat. Can you imagine, though, washing your hands and it splashes on one of these and then just... Are, that, are, that's not me. Are you saying that sink probably shouldn't be there? Oh, I don't know. Probably be careful. <laughs> What's back here, the toilet? Yeah, just a toilet. It's dark. Mm. No, no, it's actually a pretty clean toilet. No, I know, but it's brown colored. After you into the addition here, oh, you can see we're addition. down into concrete. You have the furnace. Is this like the dancing stick? I, so, I don't know. It, this may have been from when it was a furniture store. And I don't know, maybe the boss was like one of those old school guys that wanted to be elevated above everybody else, like he's on a throne or something. That, that could be. Yeah. I, have, yeah, I have no idea why it's elevated like that. Obviously water came through here as well and punched through the drywall, so that was kind of a bummer. Yeah, they put a new drywall in there. And then you can mention water came in there too, it's on the carpet. You can see when it rains, it probably comes in through the bottoms here of the doors, just kind of soaks the carpet. So how do you fix that? You have to put these seals and sweepers, these little seals on the bottom. Easy enough. Also, the tread plate makes sure it's sealed. Okay. Behind this stage is just a random room, which they were spray painting things on the wall. Some people thought that was mold. It's not. It's, it's spray paint. It's just yeah. weird. They leaned something up there and just painted away. And another, another random fuse box. I'm guessing this is probably like a walk-in freezer or something, right? Yeah, it said walk-in cooler. There was a big disconnect for it. So yeah. It probably here. Yeah, that's what the addition was. So, all right. Well, should we test the floor? Let's do it with a Lamborghini. I mean, that's how you test the floor, right? Yeah. Why not? If it falls through, it's on you. Solid? It seems so. It didn't really give when you drove on it. Well, yeah, it's a nice building. I guess so. It can hold a Lamborghini, no problem on these floors. Even close to the scary hole down there. I do have to ask you though, what possessed you to test out your new building by driving a Lambo on a wooden floor? Um, well, honestly, I don't know. I'm, I'm just stupid, I guess. But uh, that's <laughs> one way to have confidence in the structural integrity of your building is by driving an expensive Lamborghini on it. It's a, it's a vote of confidence is what it is. Yes, a total. It, seems to be holding it, well, though. it is holding it very well. So we could load this thing up with cars. It could be my new storage building probably, right? It could. My wife would kill me though because she wants to have this space as like a rental income and to try that out. So I'm, I'm not going to do it. Okay. But if you did, you would have to cover up those windows. Oh, most certainly. Yes. But uh, anyway, nice solid building. It is. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. How much to fix? I would say five to eight grand, you'll have it ready to rent. Pretty good. I'll take it. You've given me much worse estimates on little teeny tiny cars. Yeah. Let alone giant buildings. So on that note, it's a good day. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> The window was up. All right, that need an alternative plan there.